Hey everybody, my name is Mike and I am the Backroad Adventurer. If it's your first time to this channel, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for your support and good to see you again. Uh, so I know I've promised a little bit more videos this year, but I just haven't been able to make do. Um, but this fall, I'm getting back out and I've done up my truck a little bit different this time around. Uh, more, you know, for the amount of public land hunting that I've been doing this fall you know, just an hour or so before the sunrise comes up. Uh, I just want to get a little nap in or something. So that's what I've geared my truck up to. It also works great for when we're up north uh, exploring the logging roads. Uh, in a couple of weeks here, we're going to explore the abandoned bird wash prison. So I look forward to that video coming up. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, start looking around the truck to see what I've done and uh, how my camping setup is going to be. So to start with the cap, I picked up the cap used at windmill truck caps in Alora. Uh, anybody that has ever dealt with windmill knows that, you know, they're basically selling used units, but the units are brand new. They're very picky about what they buy. They don't buy junk. They don't buy stuff with broken windows and bad seals. So essentially you're getting a cap for about half the price is new, but in very new condition. Uh, a lot of times they'll even redo the seals. And when they do the installation, they were great. Uh, the guy, the guys that I talked to, you know, knew exactly what I wanted for the cap, took me right to it, looked, said, all right, let's put it on the truck. 10, 15 minutes later, I was back on the road on my way home. Very happy with the service from windmill truck caps. If anybody's looking for a cap, definitely give them a consideration. I'll put all their information down here. Uh, so the cap I decided to go with was a Century cap. Century has a very good reputation uh, in the cap industry. They're, you know, one of the top three brands that are out there. Uh, I lucked into this cap because it's a mid-rise cap. So it has an extra four or six inches of headroom than your normal truck cap would have. Uh, it's got the sliding windows on both sides uh, and a full glass rear window that locks as well. Very important. You know, it's glass, you know, it's going to keep honest people honest. That's just the world we live in. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, the one thing it doesn't have, which a lot of people for truck bed camping, like I'm doing with this, uh, a lot of people want that sliding glass window um, so you can, you know, turn on the heat in your truck and let that airflow flow between the truck cabin and the truck cap. Uh, I wasn't, that wasn't really an issue for me because I plan on fabricating up something to insert uh, on one of the sliding windows so that way I can run a diesel heater and just pump air in through one of the sliding windows. That's going to be fine for me in, you know, these cooler temps that we're moving into in the next month or so. Uh, for winter camping, I don't think I'll be doing the truck camp. I mean, you can uh, camp out of the truck, but with the tent that I have and the fact that I've already converted it to run a wood stove, I'm very comfortable camping in that during the winter. So I think I'm still going to, you know, whenever we do go winter camping, that's definitely going to be my go-to. Now let's pop open the back and take a look at what's going on inside. This is the very simple standard standard latches for a truck cap. Um, tailgate drops down like every other tailgate. The first thing when I got the truck cap, uh, I, again, I bought it not really intending on sleeping in the back of the truck, but you know, it works now. Uh, an afterthought kind of, I guess. I lucked out on that, um, but I wanted a drawer system. So I looked at the deck drawer systems, but you know, they're about two or two grand or something like that. Wasn't exactly willing after spending just about that much on the truck cap. Wasn't willing to spend it again on a set of drawers when I could build a set of drawers. I'm not using like drawer sliders, like big heavy duty drawer sliders. I wanted all the room I could possibly have in these drawers. So what I ended up doing is getting these little things. They're just little furniture sliders, the things you put on the bottom of your couch feet to move. They come in packs of 20. So I've got 20 of these on the bottom of each drawer. Uh, when the drawers are light, they slide very, very well. Um, when the drawers are really, really heavy, like um, my drawer here on the right is, you know, pretty much all my camping stuff, my tools are in there. Um, that got a little bit too heavy for doing it with this. Um, so I'm going to look at something else for that. If I really want to load up the drawers, I'm going to need some kind of a, a better thing to slide because it got really heavy 
And then when you put the drawers back in, they would catch on the bottom piece of plywood. And well, that's why I have this one in my hand because they will just kind of pop off. It's just something to consider. If you're looking for a cheap option and you're gonna go with these like little furniture sliders or other nylon strips or stuff like that, uh, they can catch and pop off. So right now, let's take a look inside the drawers. So the drawer on the driver's side of my truck, so just like that, it slides out very well. Um, so in this drawer, I've decided to keep pretty much all my hunting gear uh, as we're in the fall season. Anybody that's a hunter knows we're out all the time right now. Uh, I just started hunting these past couple of years. Uh, so I'm kind of getting out a lot and just learning, not always being successful, but that's all part of the adventure, right? Now the drawer on the passenger side, I set it up exactly the same. So same dimensions, length and width wise. Uh, this one, I've got all my camping, all my camping stuff, tool stuff, you know, a little bit of food storage at the back. This drawer, I chose to leave mostly unfinished. Um, here, I've just kind of got a little platform. It's a false floor. This puts some random loose things underneath there. I've got majority of my power tools, Milwaukee batteries. You know, that's the nice thing about them. You can buy all these little uh, holders for the batteries just to come out super easy. Take them inside, charge them, throw them back in the truck. Uh, on this side, mostly camping gear, personal, you know, wash gear, bug jackets, gear, stuff like that, tire repair kit. Uh, here's kind of a very messy camp kitchen. Uh, and then back there, just some food left over from the last trip. Um, but like I said, you know, you can get super carried away and really pack these drawers up. Um, this one, I mean, I've got some cast iron. Uh, I've got a cast iron pan and a cast iron Dutch oven in here. So that's not helping with the weight. But uh, before I had this section here, uh, full of, you know, I had a big socket set. I had another tool roll with wrenches and just, and different sets of drivers and screwdrivers and stuff like that. Uh, it was just way too heavy. You're, you know, struggling to lift it and push it in easily. Um, so these are all things to consider about when you're looking at building a set of drawers, uh, especially really big drawers like this. Um, they can weigh a lot when you really want to fill them up. So, I'm going to look at some kind of different uh, sliding track for this drawer, especially that way I can still load it up. Uh, the other one stays pretty light. It's working pretty good just with this, uh, with just with the little furniture sliders that I have on it right now. Um, but you know, big drawers, big sliders. Uh, it's all something just to consider if you're thinking about doing the same kind of setup. But as you can see, even though this is, you know, got some weight to it, it's still fairly manageable. Just pick it up slightly. It's and slide it in. Okay, so that's all the drawers and what I keep in them. Uh, we'll go on top of the drawers now and take a look at that. Brought you guys a little bit closer so you can see inside now. Uh, so for my sleeping platform, everything is made out of three quarter inch plywood. So it's super heavy. Um, it's a struggle for one person taking it in and out. I mean, I'm not gonna be taking it out very often. So that wasn't really a concern of mine. Uh, all my vehicles are more or less purpose built. Uh, for what I like to do. Uh, okay, so for my sleeping setup, I went with a trifold mattress uh, from Amazon. Uh, it's a twin size. It's just me. You could easily fit, you know, a double in here or possibly even a queen if you shorten up the sides a little bit. I never really took too many measurements in that respect, but uh, the twin is going to work great for me. Lots of room for, you know, I can roll around and thrash all I want. And, you know, nobody's going to complain. I did add some curtains, uh, just some curtains from Walmart, just for some privacy on the side windows and a little bit of insulation, you know, for what it is, um, you know, every little bit of insulation can help. Um, but the, the curtains and the rods, again, just simple setup from Walmart. I mounted the curtain rod holders, uh, just with the factory bolts that are around the windows, they were the perfect size just to pop one of those out. I just put the curtain rod holders as far apart as I could from each other. Uh, and then just hung the curtain rods on there. Right now I have a zip tie uh, just around the rod and the rod holder, uh, just to prevent it from like, if you're going down some corrugated washboarded roads, uh, like I have been today, they will fall down uh, and kind of jump off the curtain holders. You know, this is stuff that's meant for going your house, not in a moving vehicle, let alone a truck that you take down, you know, you know, bumpy logging roads and stuff like that. Like I, like I seem to always find myself. 
other than that, I mean, it's pretty simple. Like I said, just like the six inch trifold mattress. Uh, I went with the trifold mattress. Uh, that was kind of a, a consideration. A lot of people like to just throw a normal mattress in there and then throw everything on top of it. I wanted a trifold mattress so I could kind of turn it into a couch. Uh, so just if you're in here lounging around and stuff like that, uh, you know, it's, you can still be comfortable. You don't just have to sit on, you know, you don't have to have your back leaning against the window in, at the front of the truck cap. You just prop up uh, one of the panels and use it as a backrest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a super simple setup. Uh, I've had a couple nights in it now and it, it's been working great. Um, like everything, you are gonna end up with some condensation. Uh, so it's a consideration. I figure once you're running a diesel heater, condensation's not gonna be a huge issue. But so far it's been pretty manageable as long as you can keep the windows open. And I, I run a, a cordless Milwaukee M18 fan with a six amp hour battery. Uh, and that will usually last me about two nights. Uh, so that creates some excellent uh, air movement on, just on the lowest setting. Uh, and I haven't had really too much condensation, nothing where I'm waking up with, you know, stuff dripping off the roof and onto me. So that's all you for me. Um, just a quick little kind of update and where I'm at with the, the Ram Power Wagon that I bought recently. Uh, I guess I've had it about a year now. Uh, haven't taken it on any big adventures yet, but like I said, uh, in the coming weeks, uh, myself and Jason uh, are getting back together and we're going up just south of Sudbury to explore the Camp Bison Prison. I think the prison has been shut down since the 70s. Uh, it's on private land. We had to access permission from the landowners to get it. Uh, so we're really looking forward. You know, it's somewhere we've always camped nearby at, at Burwash on some crown land. Uh, we've never actually got a chance to explore the prison. So we're pretty excited to do that. So I'll definitely be bringing all of you along in a future video for that. So if you want to see more of the adventures, uh, just subscribe. You can turn on the little bell to get notified if you want. But just subscribing to this channel uh, really helps the channel grow. and gets a lot of the information that I've put up over the past years. Uh, gets that out there into more people's hands. And we get more people exploring. Uh, more people becoming stewards of the land, uh, which I love to see. So just remember, public land is our land. Uh, there's a lot of people out there doing different things on that land. Be considerate of everybody you meet. You know, wave, say hi, pick up garbage, even if it's not yours. Doing those simple things can ensure that we're going to have this public land to enjoy for a long time. And our future generations are also going to be enjoying this public land. So thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.